Dark is a short indie title filled to the brim with soul and dedication. Why wouldn't it be? It was created mostly by a single magnificent person, Vlad Marhulets, an indie developer who dared to reject Epic's exclusivity deal in order to fulfill his promises. The story behind Dark's development and its post-development held my interest to the same extent as the game itself. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. If you are interested in the full story, then let me introduce you to the late review Dark Complete Edition. This review is based on almost 6 hours of total playtime, finding every collectible in-game, completing the base game as well as two free DLCs, acquiring 100% achievements available for this title. So here is what I think. Such a cool idea. First, let me tell you a story about an absolute chat and the most wholesome game developer, Vlad Marhulets. Dark is his brainchild. It's his first game and as he clarified when I reached out to him, he developed the game mostly alone. Some work done on animations, modeling and sound design was done by contractors, but the main portion of Dark's identity is tied directly to Vlad. So the game was being steadily developed. It was among the top 50 most wishlisted games on Steam before it launched. Four days after Vlad announced Dark's Steam launch date, he was contacted by Epic with their one-year exclusivity offer. It was pretty much at the same time when another prominent indie title, Ooblets, got snatched by Epic Game Store. In case of Ooblets, developers took Epic's offer and lashed out against disheartened fans, so the community was already heated. Mr. Marhulets, being an absolute chad, refused the offer from Epic Store, asking if he could release the game on their storefront alongside Steam and GOG. Epic declined. There is this great article that Unfold Games had published on website medium.com. I will link it under this video. Vlad described his reasoning as to why he refused Epic's offer. He felt like this move would hurt his credibility within the player base. He knew he had many fans patiently awaiting for the Steam release for years, so he didn't want to spit in their faces. He claimed all of that in a humble, professional manner. He didn't berate other developers for choosing exclusivity, as money problems are an usual occurrence in indie game dev. So the game came out and it garnered a lot of great reviews and awards. Seeing an enormous support towards his project, Unfold Games vouched to release two free DLCs for the game as a thank you to the fanbase. And well, this year Dark even won a Webby Award for 2022 People's Voice Award. Overwhelmed by the support, Mr. Marhulets promised to personally write and send thank you notes to the fans of the game. What an absolute wholesome dude. This is what we miss in this industry. A genuine talented people. And a realization that there are probably more Vlad Marhulets that are being squashed by this AAA industry cox makes me sad. Anyways, this guy, a wholesome chad. And he even later made it up with Epic since I already saw Dark being sold there and even being given away for free. Dark tells a story about a boy trapped in a lucid dream. Well, more like a lucid nightmare. The game is very vague and only shows you things, never tells you anything directly. The atmosphere is very grim dark, kinda grotesque at times. Our main character looks like taken straight out of a Tim Burton's movie, with his big head and thin, overstretched limbs. I'm pretty sure that's not only my observation though. The game world is engulfed in this purple-violet gloom. The music is very scarce, which leaves a lot of room for an impressive sound work. The sound of steps, cocks cracking, distant weird noises, all of that is effectively used to enforce immersion and dread. The awful noises made by various monsters, their heavy breathing. The game uses it not only to induce horror, but also to give players a heads up when they approach a monstrosity. And 
ambient noises are also impressive, but an absolute highlight of the sound design has to be the usage of mechanisms allowing player to control their surroundings. Whenever our protagonist uses a switch to change the level layout, it makes a sound which is a little bit louder than other effects. It's very satisfying and gives us the impression like we are finally starting to take control over this chaotic nightmare sequence. I love it. Some people might describe Dark as a horror game. Well, it's definitely thrilling and uses a couple of jump scares, but I personally was never scared. I'm not saying it to pretend like I'm some tough, testosterone-filled individual. No, I had to stop playing Alien Isolation because I got too tense and I couldn't handle being uh, chased by Xenomorph. I almost shot myself during the introductory section in Resident Evil 7. Dark introduces a mood of dread and weirdness. It's a friggin nightmare, right? If we single out each model, then the graphics might not seem to be that impressive and detailed, but the project as a whole is incredibly interesting and distinct from anything else, and that's what counts. Visual style and art direction are top notch. The game is a series of nightmare sequences set in different locations. It's hard to talk about any plot. If I hadn't read the game description on the storefront, then I wouldn't even know that the protagonist's name is Lloyd. So I guess if there is any plot or meaning to this story, it's up to the player's interpretation. It might pose a problem for some people. I guess adding even a little bit of clues to explain context of the dreams wouldn't hurt. There are those journal pages in each chapter. They are used as collectibles. Once you pick one up, the game acknowledges that you've got it, but nothing else happens. Those pages could have been a great device of uncovering secret meaning behind all of the nightmares. Like they could be a memories or a secret fears or phobias. In my opinion, it's a little bit of a wasted potential. The twisted atmosphere of Dark permeates directly to the gameplay. Because this game is literally twisted. I bought the game two years ago and it sat on my pile of shame until this point. It's actually good because I kinda forgot most of what I saw in the trailers. When I started the game, it was like discovering every mechanic and I was so impressed by the creativity encapsulated in this small title. Okay. The controls are very basic, but the way the game uses its surroundings and forces you to figure out puzzles is anything but basic. The levels, which are called chapters in here, are pretty small, but they offer various ways of interacting with their layout. The level design in general is fantastic. The amounts of creativity and various twisted ideas stored in this game are astonishing. Each new chapter managed to surprise me with a new way of interacting with the stage. The same goes for various puzzles. Most of them are quite easy, but the diversity between challenges keeps you playing. You could hit couple of stops in your playthrough. It happened to me. Those are not tied to any kind of difficulty, but more to a lack of clear exploration rules. You see, the game is designed to force players to explore its levels in various weird ways. Traversing ceilings and walls. Then when you switch even a small part of the level, let's say you lower a bridge, then the whole exploration route changes. It's easy to sometimes miss one corner of the map. And if a pickup needed for further exploration is hidden there, then you are left wondering what the hell you are supposed to do. Fortunately, as I said, the levers are not very big, so by wandering around the zone, it's usually easy to finally find the spot you missed. Some puzzles might also seem illogical. I'll give you an example. On one chapter, I picked up a watch, the one with the straps that you wear on your wrist. It seemed like there was no place for me to use it. It turns out that player is supposed to use the watch as a bridge to cross a big gap. Lack of clear logic might be a problem in a puzzle game. But then I thought that this is a dream. Try to remember some of your dreams. There are crazy AC trips, chaos without logic.
So in that regard I might give this game a pass, especially since there aren't that many pickups, so figuring out what to use is pretty easy anyway. There are also some stealth sections in the game. You do not fight with various monsters, players are supposed to either sneak around or run away. Both of the three DLCs offer a single chapter's worth of content. They are done with care and attention to details. Both the tower and the crypt offer a new refreshing mechanics and puzzles. It's a commendable addition. And now we got to the biggest flaw of the game. It's short. Dark Complete Edition can be finished in 2, maybe 3 hours. It took me almost 6 hours to max out the game. In my opinion, the game is worth its price, but if you find yourself short on cash, then I highly recommend waiting for sale. Ok, let's see the most recent 100 reviews for the title. As always, I feel inclined to explain that I do not consider my opinion as superior. I'm doing this because I find it very interesting to check on other people's reviews, their arguments and if maybe they have noticed something that I had missed. At the time of making this video, Dark Complete Edition sits at a score of 93% positive reviews out of almost 3000 total reviews. A very good score. As this is a short game, most reviewers spend a total of 2 to 5 hours in game. There are very few reviews with less than 1 hour of playtime. According to Steam users, the strongest points of the game are its visual art style, audio and the idea behind movement and puzzles. Many people like the atmosphere of dark. Puzzle difficulty level was praised as they are challenging enough to make you think for a while, but not hard enough to be frustrating. And there is even one reviewer talking about being stuck because they forgot to explore the whole map. There are very few negative reviews. The main point of contention is of course the game length. Even numerous positive reviews claim that the game is too short. The same thing goes for the plot. Aside from that I found couple of reviews heavily disliking the last chapter. It has a timed chase sequence which unfortunately is designed poorly. You have no way of predicting obstacles as you run away which usually ends up in your demise. Then after reloading you adjust your movement until a new obstacle is introduced. Then you die. Player repeats this scheme over and over until they finally finish the sequence. Other negative reviews just focus on single personal grabs of each person. One reviewer disliked the spinning camera puzzle, the other one hated the Crypt DLC's main mechanic and it could go on and on. One thing about that DLC, the mechanic can indeed get tedious if you are backtracking over a long distance, so I can side with that claim. The main flaws pointed out by the community are length, plot and timed sequence in the last chapter. And well, I think I can agree with those. The complete edition of Dark comes with a total of 17 achievements. If you want to get all of them, then you will have to play both DLCs. The top achievement with the highest completion rate is the one awarded for finishing the game. Then on each one of the 6 chapters there is a hidden collectible, a journal page. I have to give it to the Unfold games, those journal pages are hidden pretty well. Finding each one of those items awards a separate trophy. Then if you finish the game again while all of the journal pages are acquired, then you will be awarded with additional achievement. As far as I have noticed it doesn't change anything about the ending, it just gives you another trophy. You do not have to collect everything in one go on the same playthrough. After completing a chapter you can replay it from the menu. Also, you do not need to even finish the level once you obtain the collectible. The game saves your progress anyways. There's also this achievement. It's awarded for triggering the three secret encounters with a backheaded boy. First encounter is in the first chapter, just after getting to the room with three spots for cogs. To the right there is a gate blocked with bars. Approach it and wait for a couple of seconds. Second encounter happens in chapter 2. After getting through turnstile you need to go forward a little bit, preferably to the point where you do not see the turnstile anymore. Then just simply go back. Third encounter happens in chapter 6. After completing the puzzle where you have to rotate parts of the room in order to connect the wire. You will even notice him running away from the morgue after your entry. So after picking up severed leg, go back to the room with the power generator and turn it off. Boy will then run away and this counts as the third secret encounter. 
when it comes to DLCs, there are no progression achievements. Every trophy requires extra steps. The obvious ones are collectible skulls hidden in the Crypt DLC. There are four in total. They are hidden even better than the journal pages from the base game. If you find yourself out of ideas where to look for them, then, you know, internet comes to the rescue. In the Tower DLC, there is a classic pyramid puzzle, where you have to rearrange pyramid into new position. Achievement requirement here states that you need to do it with the least amount of moves needed. So just think about it and take your time. Now let's pull out our clocks, it's speedrun time. Dark Complete Edition has 4 achievements tied to being fast. Two of them are tied to doing a puzzle really fast and the other two require to complete a level in a pretty short time. Those levels are the Tower and the Crypt, so both of the DLCs. In order to get those trophies, the Tower needs to be finished in 8 minutes or less. The Crypt requires a time of 12 minutes or less. It's actually not that hard, but this challenge will require some dedication. Players are asked to come up with the efficient plan of running through the puzzles, learning the exact patterns how to do said puzzles as fast as they can. To be honest, the levels are not big and after second or third try you kinda get a good idea what is where. After that it's just planning, which order of doing things is the fastest. 12 minutes in the crypt is very generous. At the same time, this trophy took me the longest to complete. I just kept failing at the puzzles, especially this one. It just took me so much time each try, but then I figured out and memorized a way of doing it. After that, it was easy. The two timed puzzle achievements are tied to the Caesar puzzle from the Crypt DLC and the Spinning Maze puzzle from the base game. If you go for the speedrun in the Crypt, then you will have to memorize Caesar puzzle either way. It's actually pretty easy. The spinning maze challenge is definitely the hardest one. You have to complete the whole puzzle in time shorter than one spin of the camera, which basically means that the whole problem has to be solved off camera. There's no other way. You not only have to memorize keyboard inputs, but then you need to perfectly perform it in a really fast manner. So yeah, it's hard. This game connects two stories. The game story of a boy trapped in a lucid nightmare and a story of its developer, Unfold Games, studio led by a single person who refused Epic's Game Store exclusivity offer in order to provide on his promises toward player base. And well, he did provide. Not only with a dark, twisted and madly creative puzzle platformer, but also by releasing two free DLCs as a thank you to fans. Dark Complete Edition offers a distinct, moody visuals, impressive sound quality and what's most important, an innovative, riveting gameplay. Every chapter offers a new spin on its twisted design and the atmosphere of dread immerses players in this grim nightmare. There are two main flaws to point out. The game is quite short. It can be finished in two hours. Also, the plot is almost non-existent and might seem like a lot of things doesn't make any sense. But that's the beauty of it. This is a dream and dreams are chaotic, nonsensical. Even if you feel like the game is too short, I believe that the creativity behind this project is worth a try. I recommend this game. I want to thank you for watching this video till the end. If you liked it then press the thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content. If you didn't like it, feel free to press a dislike button and maybe tell me what you didn't like in the comments. My question to you after this video is, if a game offers an interesting spin on its gameplay and overall design but takes about 2 or 3 hours to complete, would you consider it to be too short? What would be your price range for this kind of experience? So that's all from me, bye.